In this video, I'm going to show you how to mission plan using the DJI Pilot app too. Let's get into it. All right guys, so now you want to fly an automated mission plan with the R3 Pro on your DJI M300 or the M350 drone. Today we're going to talk about the DJI Pilot app too. So I have here in my hand the controller for the M300. I think it works the exact same on the M350 controller with the Pilot App 2 app. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and click on Flight Route. And then I'm gonna create a new route. And we're gonna do a mapping mission. So here we can see our base map. I'm gonna go ahead and make one click and start drawing a rectangle around the area of interest that I wanna fly today. Maybe. There we go. So what we can do is we can grab these corners, we can drag them over to cover the area we want to fly. And guys, there's a bunch of different tutorials out there on how to do a DJI Pilot app. It's all the same. So I'm going to fly this little parking lot in this building. And then next thing I'm going to do is title the mapping mission. I'm just going to call it Test. That looks good. We're going to go ahead and select a camera. So now for the R3 Pro, what you want to do is come all the way down here to the bottom and click on Custom Camera. And you can see I already created a custom one, but if you don't have this yet, you go ahead and click on that custom camera in blue and you'll create a new one. And let me go ahead and open the existing one that I have and show you the parameters. I call it R3 Pro. We have the photo size. The width is 6,252 pixels. The height is 4168 pixels. The sensor size is 23.5 millimeters and the height is 15.6. And the focal length is 15.6 millimeters. And I went ahead and put the minimum interval at one second. This is pretty good. So now, in the future, once I've created that, I can just click on the R3 Pro. And what we see here is the automated flight plan is just drawn for us. You can see the flight height here at the, on the right-hand side. It's at 100 meters right now. I can bring it on down by clicking the minus 10 until we get to 50. Uh, we can actually be at 60. That's pretty good. And if we scroll back, we can see the takeoff speed. Uh, I have that pretty fast. That's fine. You can go fast. 10 meters per second is okay. But in the flight speed, we want to go back down to about, let's go at five meters per second today. Now, it's all personal preference and what kind of data you're getting. If you're flying a small site like this, I might fly a little slower and do a little higher overlap. If I'm doing a very large site and all I care about is ground and I'm not really caring about accuracy that much, I can fly at six or seven meters per second and do a little bit lower overlap. That's okay. But if you want the highest accuracy, the slower and lower you go and higher overlap will always get you the best results. So today, this is a single building. I'm gonna go ahead and fly at five meters per second. Uh, and then we're also at 60 meters AGL. Now below that with the course angle, we can go ahead and click that and rotate. And you can actually rotate the flight lines. And that makes it pretty easy. And next, we wanna click on the advanced settings. This is where we can find the side overlap as well as the frontal overlap and the margin. So here you can see I have it set to 70% side overlap. That's a ton of side overlap, and that's just because the area is so small and that I know that the best data is always captured right down below the LiDAR sensor. So 70% is gonna give you amazing data. I got the walls of the building, but if I'm flying something that's like a flat field um, and I just wanna get the topo, I can actually bring this all the way down to about 30 to 35%, no problem. But on this one, like I said, I'm gonna stay at 70%. So we'll just go ahead and put that in there. And in the frontal overlap, you see, I just threw it down pretty low to 17. Actually, go down 10%, it doesn't really matter. The only thing on the frontal overlap is gonna do is if the camera was being triggered by the drone, then the trigger speed would be limiting the flight speed on the frontal overlap. Basically, it doesn't affect anything on the R3 Pro. So we just want it as minimum as possible. That way, we don't run into any problems with how fast the drone wants to fly. So I just throw it all the way down to the bottom. And the margin, you can see here, if I just increase the margin, it's gonna give me a little margin on the edge of the, the, the outline there. But uh, I planned for it, so I'm gonna trim those corners anyway, so leave it at zero. And then once we're all satisfied with what the flight plan looks like, we can go ahead and just click save here on the left-hand side. Name already exists, I'm gonna call it mission one. There we go. Okay, so now we've created a mission plan on the DJI Pilot app too. Now the next thing we wanna do is make sure that the base station is recording data, that the LiDAR is connected to the drone, that it's turned on, and that the green light is active if you're using the one button push, which is what you will be doing with the DJI Pilot app too. So you wanna turn that on, make sure it's green, 
And then the next thing you want to do is click and then click and hold on the LiDAR system to start recording data. Once you've recorded data, what we're going to do is we're going to manually fly. So we're going to take off. We're going to go to we're clear above the tree line. Just go nice and steady up, slow. You don't have to go too fast. You go right around, you know, a few meters per second until you get above the tree line. Then once we're there, we're going to go ahead and go forward, just full speed, and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's going to be your high speed calibration. We talk about this all the time, it's high speed calibration. And then from there, you're going to fly one figure eight. And the figure eight is like an airplane would fly it. So don't crab walk like this, fly it like this and come around. And then once you've done that, what you can do is click play on the DJI Pilot app and then follow the instructions to upload the mission plan to the drone and then start flying the mission plan. After you've flown the mission plan, you can actually bring the drone back manually if you'd like, land the drone and go ahead and follow the procedure to turn off the LiDAR, which is just letting it sit on the ground for 30 seconds and then you do the click and click and hold and it stops acquiring data. It's also important to note that when you come back to land, do that one solid five second fast speed, make that the last thing you do. What you wanna do is you wanna leave doing the high speed straight line, come back to the high speed straight line, 30 seconds on the ground, 30 seconds on the ground at the beginning too. And that's how you fly with the DJI Pilot app, doing the manual calibration flight, uploading the mission and flying it once you're in the air and then landing and stopping the data using the one button press. All right guys, well I hope that was informative and taught you a lot. You can do train following on DJI Pilot app. We have our app coming out soon. For now, this one works and does great. And there's UGCS, a bunch of other apps out there. We'll have more tutorials to teach you how to do those things soon. But for this one, I think you guys have all the knowledge you need to be successful. See you on the next one.